Hey, Kelly. Hey, Doug. How's it going? I think they stuck us together because we're expats. I think you're right. Yeah, so like the American in Europe thing. It's working. Yeah, it's weird because um, how have you found it? Do you get treated like an American? Is marketing as an American different? There are always cookies on the table. Yeah. Yeah, I have a lot of cookies. They ask me if I want cookies and if I want a, a tall coffee with milk. Because they know you're a Yank. Yeah, exactly. See? So that is one difference all the time. So that's yeah, I kind. think. Um, hmm. So I noticed differences. So I've noticed that over time, and I think that this is a, an advantage, I'm often brought in when they just want to eliminate all language barriers. Okay. So for, I guess, politics within the organization, they found that I'm an equalizer. All right. I kind of like that. I feel really powerful that way. It's That's like, interesting. Yeah. So it's nice. Yeah. We have an equivalent kind of issue where a client's not sure whether to go European spelling, UK English, or oh, yeah. American English. Flavor or flavor? Right. The U's or I-S-E versus I-Z's, Eddie. Digitize or digitize. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Do you get that a lot? Because we get tell people... all the time. Americans have a hard time with the O-U-R, and they don't think it's just international. They think it's quaint yeah. and cute. Yeah. Whereas if a European sees the American spelling, they think, oh, that's just, that's American. It's kind of a default, you know? Right. So we always say, oh, default to the Yank spelling, but then I think, am I being really Yank-centric? In, in I, I push it all Yank-centric. Do you? Yeah. So the one yeah. industry um, I found in healthcare, yeah. they really favor more conservative. They think the British English okay. is queen. Right. I don't know if I agree with them, but B2C, they're going towards America. Yeah. So I find the American and we don't, I get a lot of people if I work um, with agencies or end user, like uh, audience feedback saying, oh, you, you have a spelling there with an yeah. S. So I just said, I don't know, I think your population in, in Europe, they're just going to have to get with uh, yeah. American English in schools and then it'll all be natural. So we do, yeah. we have those copywriting debates. Right. So it goes back and forth and everyone's correcting. I'm like, no, 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 it's going to be English here. Default. Out the yeah. Door. We try to agree ahead of time, but there's always a stakeholder reading it somewhere who thinks, wait a second, we're British, we don't do that. Yeah, exactly. It's like, okay, if your audience is British, and right. that, absolutely. Right. But if it's global. Yeah, I think it's, yeah. And, and I find that um, it's very true. If it's England that we're, you know, the European, I work a lot with um, subsidiaries right. and partners. And they all default, they seem to default to what they've learned in school. And it seems deeper British English. Right. Even if globally the readership is going to be more american based so i think that that's something that they just haven't yeah figured out yet it's funny because it's the insularity of americans that makes international spelling a little bit of a penalty it's the fact that americans think it's cute or think it's ye olde because it's british right and you know i think americans are you don't realize till you move away from america how yeah. insular america is how how exactly. america centric america exactly. is and then you kind of realize, wow, okay. And, but then you feel bad about asking yeah. them to turn to Yank spelling. Well, and how strange is it to have to like send out a memo dictating which yeah. American language all translation and all browser should be set to. So right. everyone is on the same page. Yeah. That was like, that took, I don't know, it took one client like four months to finally figure out what the problem was. Right. With the, they were like, don't you guys get the memo? It's yeah. all American, but they had like right. British translation. Yeah. Well, someone should make the decision and stick to it. It was funny because when I moved to the UK, so it was like 27 years ago, I was a copywriter and I thought I'm not going to be able to be a copywriter here because I won't know any of the idioms. I won't know. I'm spelling's easy enough, but I just won't be able to get the voice. And it turned out that it's probably the only profession where being an American is a big plus. So, you know, an American way of speaking, this kind of confident, um, yeah. you know, voice clients really wanted. So I found I could be a copywriter right away. I, did, I didn't have to go through this long process of acculturation. Yeah, I think it's interesting. And I think that being American has that advantage where we're the voice yeah. to say a lot of things that would never be said. Yeah. And, and culturally, and I think it's also when it comes to being American again and with uh, on continental Europe, with the two, the dual formalities right. of the you know, the voo and the, yeah, and the two, yeah, yeah. you just bust through that. And people love it because yeah. I think what people don't understand in Europe, even though English is the, the, the work language, that the local language really takes over in the office. So right. it was really an enlightening moment when I worked in Germany 
And people had worked together for 20, 25 years, and they were still using a formal tense. It would be like saying, Mr. Kessler. Good morning, Mr. Kessler. Yeah. There was no Doug. With no irony. Because of age. That 20 yeah. years together, wow. and they didn't, they didn't use first names. Yeah. And then I bust through, and I'm it's like, hi, hey, Doug, how's it yeah. going? And they were just like, whoa. And everyone's like, bring her into the meetings, yeah. right? So yeah. I think being that American, and I play it up. I'm just like that, no BS. Like, here I am. Oops, did I say the wrong thing? Sorry. Yeah. Right. Boot broken. That's right. Play and the American they, card. Everyone, but yeah. they like it. That's right. They it's not more. just how you say it. It's what you say. So clients in, in England, I mean, famous diffident. They would not want to brag. You know, it's like, well, marketing kind of gets to brag at times. Right. And it's good to have that instinct, especially with content marketing. You know, the bragging has been moved to a different place. But, but at some point, you have to say something good about yourself. And right. it's like, hire a yank to do that. They'll, right. <laughs> they'll they can bring it all out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not well, trouble. you guys are great at that. And with the brutal honesty, too. Mm -hmm. Like, I think I was really touched by I've always been a very honest person mm -hmm. and kind of like no BS. Yeah. And then as soon as you wrote that piece of brutal honesty, mm -hmm. it was just kind of like when people are like, ooh, Kelly, not sure. I'm like, oh, no, it's written here. I can be brutally yeah. honest. I can tell you exactly what's going on. And yeah. it's okay. Look. Yeah. Doug says so. <laughs> it's an amazing technique. I am so surprised more people don't do it because there are these documented cases of right. incredible success of just right. being insanely honest in this type. And then there aren't a lot of flops, people who are honest and suffered because of it. Right. So you a pretty proven way to go. And yet we still really struggle getting clients to be up for what I would say a pretty benign level of honesty. Like let's say this product is not great for this group of people. And that's just plain common, common sense, sense honesty. And you're doing a service to those people to say, don't waste your time here because mm -hmm. here's why we're not for you. There's a mm -hmm. better one over there for you. But it's a really nice thing to do. So it's interesting. So if you have a campaign and it's a global campaign and I work with a lot of pan-European, so it's really Europe, EMEA. Right. And I think it's interesting when we talk about brutal honesty and culture. Yeah. Like what brutally, you know, what's what's the limit of honesty when it goes across cultures? And how do you how do you on a global level, level if you're working with messaging and that creative strategy and then you yeah. have to work from, you know, France all the way over to the Emirates? How do you yeah. how do you balance it's, that? It's really difficult. I mean, I don't know. You must do too, where you rely on local understanding to tell you because, you know, I don't want to say this is our voice. Please make sure you've transcreated this voice everywhere. Right. If someone knows, that voice is going to alienate right. people. And even within Europe, where you think there's got to be enough cohesion, you know more than anyone how diverse Europe is. Yeah. And something that is just fine and fun in the UK might really flop in Germany. Yeah. And, and vice versa. So for me, it's to not assume one size fits all, which again is not a Yank natural thing. Right. Yanks are much more. Yeah. The domestic market in America was so huge. It was just fine. One voice just did fine. And so I think American marketers are not as used to the idea of having to to be sensitive to cultures and have nuance and everything else. And I think it's a it's an interesting point, too, when we talk about, you know, defaulting to that local authority. It's also a cue to headquarters. It's time to let go. You can't if yes. you want to be successful, you can't control yeah. the message. You can give the idea yeah. and the strategy. But let go. And yeah. that's a really tough. Letting go Very is so tough. difficult. Very tough. And, and you know, I don't think generally at the center there's a real understanding of the difference. It's kind of a lip service. And you get this phrase, ROW, rest of world. I love that. Right. Like America right. and ROW. And you just really feel like this has just been like, it'll be fine for them and let them change. All the other 200 other cultures and yeah. languages. Right. And then you get some businesses where the rest of the world outgrows the American market. And all of a sudden, mm. the, the, it starts shifting. Right. And marketers start to say, no, you know, we get to say it how we want to say it over here. Yeah, these American brands where you see they make absolutely no, they make no allowance for where they are. And sometimes that's okay. And sometimes being American as part of the brand is a brand value that you want to promote. If it's Levi's or something, you know, you want that Americanness built into it. With B2B... It goes back and forth. Some tech, a lot of tech markets for velocity, Silicon Valley has a cachet, and you may want to dial up the Americanness in other right. markets. But then in others, you know, their global markets, you just want to dial it down. And I find that even, and it's a great point with the dialing up and dialing down, because I think one, even if you have to dial down on the messaging because it's too strong, I think the spirit, I think something yeah. that we carry over to Europe or possibly other areas that Americans go and engage, 
is that spirit and that's uniquely American. Yeah. And I think that's something without changing anything, if we leave messaging alone and it stays in its its space, there's just this spirit that comes yeah. across and this this confidence of it's okay. It's go it's going to be okay. Yeah. Because we can make it okay. I think that confidence word to me is absolutely key. And the more I look at great marketing, marketing I love across all spectrum, it's underneath, that's the common thing. It's confident marketing. You know, it's looking someone right in the eye and saying, I'm good at what I do as a company, and then we're good at this communication thing too. Those two things. We're good at this, so you're going to enjoy the experience of interacting with us. We like what we do here. We're enjoying our jobs, you know? That yeah. kind of message, which seems to be scrubbed out a lot. I don't know if it's... um how cultural that is, or if it's a B2B thing. But I do think if there's, I feel like Americans can bring a breath of fresh air into some markets. I think so too. Yeah. I think it's just that, and, and I think using English is a real advantage. Yeah. I, I see so many times where there's a hesitation and for so long li living and working in Germany and, and French speaking Switzerland, it was learn the language, fit in, blend. And at some point I woke up saying, wait a minute, yeah. I'm never going to fit in. Right. Like, I'm just going to be like this strange German speaking. She's not German. What is she doing? Where does she fit? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So really using that is the unique differentiator of bringing in new ideas yeah. and being able to, to really uh, yeah, bring in that spirit. I think I it's like you... a spirit thing. Yeah, you're right. You can't fight against it anyway. No. Like for me to not behave like a yank would be silly because I am one and everyone's going to treat me like that anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I'm always an icebreaker. Yeah. I like it. It's just like, so, well, we have an American in the room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you tap dance? <laughs> what else can you do? But uh, no, it's interesting. And I, I think another aspect too is, um, and what's really interesting to me is teams. I think, again, if we go back to when I've worked in the States, we never thought as much about culture and um the, the need to really reach out and understand yeah. people to make a marketing campaign go or make that um, piece of content work, mm -hmm. really understanding not just the audience, but who are the people who are writing that? Because we're not, we're not working with people who have the same cultural background. Right. So the writing is very different or their context is very different. And I think that there is always, I have this context um, filter Right. Or, or like unfilter in mind, I guess, which way you look at it, you go into a team and I have to really survey and say, okay, you know what? We have someone from Germany here. We have Swede, Dutch, you know, maybe we have someone from India yeah. and kind of try to understand really quickly what everybody's point of context is yeah. before we start talking about a piece. And that's just mental gymnastics for me. It comes yeah. more easily, but so many campaigns and pieces of content have just fallen flat on not just the messaging, but it's not everyone is coming from the same yeah. baseline. I mean, even just that you're bringing that perspective to try to align that and take it into account, I think must help a lot. But one thing I'm always scared of is that one over indexes for, for culture or something like, because you're never sure, is this just that individual style? Or are they saying in France, we don't do it like that. And you think, right. well, you don't do it like that. But right. there's a lot of people in France that, you know, there's, there's no one national character in that sense. So sometimes we get pushback about culture. And I'm not local. I don't know. It's like when your car mechanic says, right. this has got to be done. It's like, well, I don't know. Okay. Anything. Well, who am I to say you're wrong? And yet I happen to know even within one culture, you'll get people with differences of opinion. Mm. So... Do you take that one person's opinion as gospel That's or not? That's difficult, right? Yeah, you just need people you can trust to do that localization and try to I keep voice so. intact and, and the goal of the thing. And maybe find the commonality instead, mm. of, instead of everyone, because when, when we have, uh, for one client, if we come together and bring all the subsidiaries around, everyone's talking about how different their problem is. It's so different. You know, yeah. oh, we could never work with that person and we need yeah. new personas. It's a corporate persona, how is that going to possibly work for That's us? Right. It's like, yeah, but you know, like all IT directors across the world probably think about three things. I know. There's so much more and in common than different, especially right. in things like tech markets. This thing is used the same everywhere. You know, there's going to be a lot of in common stuff. Yeah. Or healthcare. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, the heart condition body. is a heart condition. It Pretty doesn't. Much. It doesn't know what country you live yeah. in. It doesn't know what your culture is. A forklift truck is a forklift truck. Do we really need to allow for everything? But I suppose creatively, of course, it makes sense to allow. But there ought to be enough common ground there, shouldn't there? Yeah, I think mm. so.